Okay, the first thing you need to do is get the keys to the unit, unlock both locks, open the door, verify the LCD and the unit are operating properly, hit the enter button, the LCD will light up. This tells you that the <coughs> power is on to the LCD, hit the right arrow key, it'll read performance, press to view, right arrow key again. Operating voltage and current, which is recorded. Line voltage and current, which is recorded. Tell you which battery string the unit is running and what the voltage is. So tell you if the charger is in float mode and how much current is applied to the charger currently. Major alarm should read OK. Minor alarm should read OK. Record the battery temperature and the inverter temperature. LCD should read battery 1 amp, 0 volts, press to charge. Output power, which is reported. Output power in this case is 620 watts. Input power which is recorded, and in this case is 900 watts. Back to output voltage and current. Next step, next step is to attach the transformer or the batteries that are going to bypass the main unit. Plug like this. Be inserted into the PIMF. And next, using a multimeter set on VDC, pull the main power cord. Verify the unit is between 40 and 42 volts DC. Oh, you got it? I can't do it. This indicates the charger is working properly. Next step is to set the, the filtered PIM switch to AUX. Oh, this will allow you to bypass the unit. Breaker switch gets turned off. Transponder cables are all unplugged. Output cable is unplugged. Two captive screws on the front of the unit are loosened. The unit's unplugged from the outlet in the back. All power should be off to the unit now. The inverter can be pulled out and inspected. The next step is to loosen the five screws and take off the faceplate. Next stop is to remove the faceplate. Using the T-handle, pull the inverter several inches out of the unit. Next step is to take and check the relay. Relay is here. It may or may not be attached to the unit by a tie wrap. If it is attached, cut the tie wrap and pull the relay from the unit. Units to be looked at with a flashlight. Connections are to be verified. If the relay looks damaged or burned, it is to be replaced. Reinsert the relay in the unit. Unplug the temperature sensor cord. Pull the inverter from the unit. Disconnect the ribbon cable using two latches. The unit completely comes out. Ribbon cable is to be inspected for any damage. Go the length of the ribbon cable. Verify there's no major kinks or cuts in the cable. Next, this inverter has had the wires rerouted around 
the end of the heat sink. The end of the heat sink is what is causing the damage to the wires and causing the inverters to short. After the wires in the inverter have been rerouted and re-tie wrapped in these areas, reattach the ribbon cable. Verify it's properly latched. The unit is to be lined up in the two guides. Holding the ribbon cable, reinsert the unit in. So what, what is the heating of the uh, heating, complete heating of the first? Reattach the two captive screws. Two uh, Yeah. Put the front plate back on the unit. After the front plate is reattached, all the cables are to be reattached. Power cord, input output. Next unit is to be plugged back in. After everything is plugged back in, breaker switch is switched on. Filter pin switch goes back to main. LCD should read multi-link in the version of the unit. Scroll through. Verifying all the readings as they were before. The last test <clears throat> is to turn off the breaker on the pole or the line breaker, forcing the unit into standby. Verify the unit's still functional. Turn the line breaker back on. Verify the unit is functional one more time. The certification is complete. This is the battery.